What would you do if you won the lottery tomorrow and became absurdly rich? Would you have one of your hands replaced with a chainsaw? Build a room composed entirely of marshmallows? No, just me? <laughs> well, whatever crazy idea came into your head, it's likely that some rich guy somewhere has already done something just as crazy. So from searching for the secrets of immortality to dumping 100 horses worth of poop on a giant Christmas tree, here are some of the craziest things the rich have ever done. Nutgate Flying economy can be rough. Cramped seats and long flights are a recipe for frustration. But most of us get by without some kind of major meltdown. For the obscenely rich, however, even first-class treatment can be enough to warn a temper tantrum. In 2014, the vice president of Korean Air, Heather Cho, was taking a flight back to South Korea from New York. As a first-class passenger, she was given some complimentary macadamia nuts before the plane took off. Sounds lovely, right? Well, Cho didn't think so. See, these nuts were provided to her in their original packaging, but she'd expected to be served them on a plate. Shock! Horror! Furious, she commanded the cabin crew chief, Park Chang Jen, to beg for forgiveness on his knees. Not content with just demeaning him, she proceeded to repeatedly strike his knuckles with a tablet before firing the poor guy on the spot and kicking him off the plane. Man, what a piece of work. The kicker, the nuts were actually properly served in accordance with Korean air protocol. She was just being a diva. Despite her attempts to cover up the fiasco, the so-called nut rage incident eventually went public and Cho was rightly lambasted for her behavior. Park was reinstated and awarded $18,000 and Cho served five months in prison for violating aviation safety, coercion, and abuse of power. Aw, oh, nuts! A Saudi Celebration Everybody knows that the Saudi elite are very, very rich, and they love to show it. So when Saudi Prince Fahd al Saud finished his degree in 2013, he wanted to go big to celebrate. Instead of holding a traditional party, he decided to drop over $16 million to book entire sections of Euro Disney in Paris for himself and 60 guests. Whoa, I didn't even know that was possible. But money talks. Tailor-made events were set up for the prince and his group, and apparently, rare Disney characters made appearances for him. I don't know what classifies as a rare Disney character, but hell, for $16 million, I bet you could use Pluto as a footstool. That said, Fod did allow the general public to enter and meet some of these characters too, so fair play to him on that front. Astonishingly, that's pretty much all we know about the colossal shindig. Turns out that staff at the park were under strict orders not to speak about the prince, so your guess is as good as mine on what confidential Disney secrets he was privy to. Maybe they even thawed Big Walt out for a go on Thunder Mountain. Clive Palmer's Jurassic Park Picture an eccentric, gray-haired old man obsessed with the idea of creating a theme park populated by dinosaurs. Now get rid of that image of Jurassic Park's John Hammond, I'm talking about real-life Australian billionaire Clive Palmer. Our boy is an absolute oddball, responsible for pumping hundreds of millions of dollars into an as-yet-unfinished second Titanic before he had a go at a prehistoric wonderland as well. Yep, old Clive set up a sprawling park filled with 160 animatronic dinos named <sighs> Palmersaurus. Overinflated ego aside, it sounds like that would have made a fun day out if it hadn't sucked. Yep, far from the sprawling Dinopolis that was promised, the park was tiny, overpriced, and shoddily built. The animatronics moved as sluggishly as, well, slugs, and the place was severely understaffed. Before long, people stopped visiting and it was left to rot. But Clive had a plan. He contacted the scientist responsible for the first successful cloning of a mammal, Dolly the Sheep, and began discussing the idea of resurrecting real-life dinosaurs. I'm dead serious. Not like we've had several movies explaining why that's a terrible idea. Besides, he couldn't even take care of the animatronic ones. Lo and behold, these grand plans for Palmasaurus seem extinct for now. But Clive is apparently planning a $100 million revamp of the attraction regardless. Hmm, 
I'm sorry, but just like Jurassic Park, I can only see this ending in disaster. You know what won't end in disaster, though? Hitting those like and subscribe buttons down below. That way, you'll never miss out on more crazy videos like this one. All done? Perfect. Let's get right back to it. An Escobar Escapade Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard of Pablo Escobar. You know, that notorious, dangerous, and incredibly rich Colombian crime kingpin? He's not around anymore, but back when he was, he made a name for himself as the wealthiest criminal in history. Just how rich is that, though? Well, while on the run from the law in the early 90s, he casually offered to pay off all $10 billion of Colombia's national debt in exchange for his freedom. He was that rich. Guess you could say he had money to burn, right? Well, you'd be surprised. See, Escobar brought his family with him while he was on the run on what must have been the worst vacation ever. As they bounced between safe houses, their living conditions were sometimes dire. In fact, one night it was so cold that his daughter became hypothermic. Escobar's solution? He burnt $2 million in cash to warm everybody up. Jeez, that's absolutely outrageous. If I had that much money to literally burn, I'd be sleeping soundly if I was on the run or not. The Immortality Initiative It's fair to say that one of the only things money can't buy is time. After all, nobody's immortal, but ultra-wealthy Russian billionaire Dmitry Itskov is looking to change that. No, seriously. In 2011, Itskov set up something he calls the 2045 Initiative a non-profit organization that aims to make eternal life a genuine possibility. How? By downloading human consciousness into robot bodies, of course. Yep, it might sound like something out of a cheesy sci-fi movie, but it's totally true. The plan is to transfer the human mind into an artificial brain connected to an android or holographic body. That way, we won't be subject to aging and could theoretically live for as long as the artificial body allows. He's absolutely convinced that this will be a reality by 2045. He might be, but it sounds absolutely bonkers to me. I mean, how do you go about downloading a human consciousness? Indeed, there's massive debate among the scientific community as to whether something like that could ever be possible. Most scientists are firmly against the idea, though the eccentric billionaire Elon Musk reckons it'll happen sooner rather than later. Do I trust his words over the majority of the scientific community? Probably not, but if you're watching this video in the 2040s from your epic robot body, then we can safely say it worked out. Hmm, would you even want to live forever in a 10-can suit? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Kooky Caligula Throughout history, there have been a lot of crazy rich rulers that were also just plain crazy. Chief among them was arguably the Roman Emperor Caligula, who reigned from 37 to 41 AD. This guy was a real piece of work. For a start, he legally changed his name to the god Jupiter and even dressed like him in an attempt to gain respect. It didn't work. His ego also led him to pass a law banning people from standing over him just so they couldn't catch a glimpse of his bald spot. Talk about insecurities. Oh, and he tried to enter a romantic relationship with the moon. Yes, the big one in the sky. This uh, also didn't work. Side by side with his insanity was his obsession with wealth. As well as bathing in gold coins, the emperor was also known to dissolve precious pearls in vinegar and drink them as a display of his riches. Yuck. But despite all this madness, the thing he became most well known for was his treatment of his racehorse, Incatatus. Caligula loved him. Old Incatatus was given a stable that was more like a palace, complete with servants that fed him oats cut with flakes of gold. And whenever the pampered horse was due to participate in a race, the entire neighborhood was commanded to remain silent for the whole day before so he could concentrate. Utter insanity. It couldn't get weirder than that though, right? Well, according to legend, Caligula went so far as to have his horse appointed a consul of the Roman state, essentially making him one of the bigwigs in charge of things. In truth, Caligula was offed before this could happen, but the emperor had wanted it to. Hmm, a horse for a politician. I suppose it might have done a better job than what we've currently got. Illuminati Party We've all heard rumors of secret shindigs held by the rich and powerful. 
Elusive organizations like the Illuminati and the Freemasons are rumored to hold confidential get-togethers to influence our entire society. Spooky. But back in 1972, Baroness Marie-Hélène de Rothschild of the prominent French banking family held an exclusive party so wild, so lavish, so downright insane, it put the Freemasons to shame. The Rothschild Surrealist Ball was a bizarre display of extravagance that was like one of those mythical Illuminati gatherings brought to life. With a seemingly endless budget, countless celebrity guests, and an array of unsettling decor and costumes, it had it all. And when I say unsettling, I mean it. Satanic imagery and occult decorations adorned the expensive chateau the ball was held in. As for dinner, that was served on a creepy old mannequin. And if guests weren't traumatized enough by that, the dining tables themselves were decorated with decaying baby dolls, taxidermized turtles, and furry plates. Gross. I don't think I'd be able to enjoy my meal with that kind of decor. What's wrong with Burger King? Hmm, were they making a tongue-in-cheek reference to the secret societies that supposedly had these parties or actually reveling in the reality? I'm not sure, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. The Palace in the Sky If I could avoid flying commercial, I would. The whole experience can be totally soul-destroying. And that's without any nut-related incidents. Point is, flying should be fun. The Sultan of Brunei, Hassanal Bolkaya, agrees with me, it seems. His private plane is so decked out that he could live in the thing. Known as the Floating Palace, the jet has all the amenities that the Sultan might need. A master bedroom with en-suite bathrooms, a conference room, a formal dining room, you name it. But that all sounds way too practical to me. Luckily, Bolkaya isn't just about practicality. The decor is absolutely covered in solid and plated gold, right down to the toilet bowl. That's right, everybody poops. Only some of us do it in style. But how much did all this cost? Well, the base Boeing jet and all the crazy extras like Golden Boggs would have cost the Brunei official up to $520 million. Oh man, that's a whole lot of dough. Then again, this is the same guy that once dropped over $24,000 on a haircut. Pfft. When you've got a beautiful shiny dome like me, you don't need a haircut. I've had enough of this, dude. I'm getting out of here on my brand new Amazocopter. A lobster a day. The luxurious intercontinental train of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is a seriously impressive ride, but it once belonged to his father, Kim Jong-il. He was petrified of flying, so he'd take the mega train everywhere. In his time, the spacious carriages were filled with comfy furniture, bedrooms, bathrooms, and a heck of a lot of bodyguards. And if Kim or his guests got peckish, they could order food or drink sourced from a huge selection of countries. Though Kim had one ordered he was particularly fond of. If you thought the train itself was crazy, listen to this. Apparently, the old North Korean leader was so keen on fresh lobster that he had it airlifted to the train by chopper every single day no matter where he was in the world. Jeez, we can only guess the amount of money and effort required to pull off such a ridiculous task, but one thing's for sure, the Liveroo wouldn't have stood a chance. To this day, the train is still used by his son, Kim Jong-un, and it's more than just fancy. The carriages are bulletproof to disappoint any potential assassins, staffed by an army of female attendants, and flanked by additional security trains filled with guards. So it's not just a luxurious way to travel, it's also a mobile fortress. Metal. The Life and Times of Nicolas Cage Ah, Nick Cage. Probably the most insane actor of our time. But as it happens, the madness extends far beyond his on-screen performances. This man's entire life is absurd. He's been stalked by a mime, awoken to a naked guy in his bedroom wearing his jacket and eating a fudgesicle, and owns a crow that apparently cusses him out. All wacky stuff, but it gets even weirder. The eccentric movie actor once set out on a quest to find the Holy Grail. Yeah, the legendary artifact that has eluded experts for hundreds of years. Unsurprisingly, he failed to recover it. National Treasure was just a movie, Nick. You can't go around raiding priceless artifacts from ancient tombs in real life. This fact clearly irks Nick, so he's doing his part to ensure there are more tombs to raid for future generations. And by that, I mean his own. Yep, 
Cage purchased his own pyramid tomb for $61,000 in preparation for the tragic day we lose this god among men. No word on whether he's chosen to booby trap it just yet, but he definitely seems the type to haunt it. I mean, back in 2007, he dropped an eye-watering $3.4 million on a New Orleans mansion purported to be one of the most haunted properties in America. Built in the 1800s by a sadistic criminal called Madame La Lorie, it's safe to say all kinds of unspeakable horrors happened inside. So why did Cage buy it? Well, he wanted to write the next great American horror novel and figured it'd be the perfect place to work. Only after dropping all that moolah, he quickly gave up on writing the book, went bankrupt, and was forced to sell the place. Ah, <sighs> only Cage. Burt Reynolds' Revenge Burt Reynolds was a popular American actor and 1970s celebrity icon known for his extensive filmography, something that landed him millions of dollars in wealth. But I'd argue there's something far crazier he should be known for. Let me set the scene. Bertie Boy was fed up with the National Enquirer, a newspaper that he said had been writing crap about him for years. So he set out to get some well-deserved payback in the most devilishly fitting way. See, Reynolds owned a ranch, a helicopter, and no less than 100 horses. And all those horses produced a hell of a lot of poop. One night in December 2013, he had his helicopter pilot collect a huge amount of said poop into a net, then take off for the paper's HQ. Can you see where this is going? The pilot reached his destination and positioned the chopper above a colossal Christmas tree outside the office building, one that they were super proud of showing off. Then boom, he let the sticky payload loose. With a sickening kasplat, the entire tree was utterly coated in stinking manure and the chopper flew off into the night. <laughs> Amazingly, nobody had any idea who was behind the attack. That is until 2015 when Bird came clean and admitted how much better it had made him feel. It's unclear if he faced charges for giving the Enquirer some of its crap back, but I doubt he cared much either way. CGI There was a time in the early 2000s when Wesley Snipes was one of the most in-demand actors in Hollywood. He helped to usher in the superhero movie craze with his starring turn in the Blade movies, but the fame and fortune would end up going to his head. While shooting 2004's Blade Trinity, Snipes went full diva. And you never go full diva. He refused to come on set for anything but his own close-ups and stayed in his trailer smoking most of the day. Because of this behavior, he didn't exactly get along with director David S. Goyer. In fact, he refused to talk to him outside of post-it notes and would demand to be referred to only as Blade. Wow, talk about a man-child. In one fateful scene, Snipes refused to open his eyes when Goyer directed him to, forcing the special effects team to edit them open in post. I can't stress enough how stupid this looks. And it went from ridiculous to downright dangerous when Snipes allegedly attempted to strangle Goyer. Yikes, that's a bad look. Suffice to say, Snipes largely disappeared from film after word of his shenanigans got out. Turns out nobody wants to work with an actor that won't even open his eyes without a week's notice. Rich Recluse Howard Hughes was an American businessman, film producer, and philanthropist born in 1905. With a net worth equating to a mind-blowing $11 billion in today's money, he was comfortably one of the richest men of his time. In his heyday, the guy was a dapper playboy that women wanted and men wanted to be. Only, money can't buy you sanity, and the older Hughes got, the less stable he became. He was a hypochondriac and gradually grew into a germaphobe too. It got so bad that he started wearing Kleenex boxes on his feet to protect himself. As these bizarre behaviors got more intense, he became increasingly reclusive, choosing to spend days on end entirely alone. On top of this, he developed a bad case of obsessive compulsive disorder, and rather than a varied diet, Hughes ate the exact same thing for dinner every night a medium rare steak with salad and peas, and he'd only ever eat the very smallest of those peas. The others got pushed to the side. At one point, Hughes holed himself up in a movie studio for four whole months. While there, he sat in darkness alone and totally naked watching movies on loop. He refused to eat anything but chocolate and chicken, drank only milk, and surrounded himself with stacks of Kleenex boxes that he repeatedly and incessantly rearranged. Right. Allegedly, he wouldn't even take bathroom breaks, instead opting to pee in bottles. Gross. What the heck did he do if he needed to go number two? 
By the time the strange vacation came to an end, Hughes was a shabby shadow of his former self and all of his own volition. It's sad, really. The man himself best summed it all up in his now infamous quote, I'm not a paranoid, deranged millionaire. God damn it, I'm a billionaire. Well said, Howie. Well said. Basinger's Big Buy Some celebrities splurge on fleets of ships, others on businesses they're ill-equipped to run, and others still on their terrible passion projects. Looking at you, Battlefield Earth. Kim Basinger, however, of 80s Hollywood fame, thought all of that was too predictable. So she bought an entire town. That's right, back in 1989, Basinger purchased the town of Brazelton, Georgia for $20 million. That's $49 million today. Or rather, she bought most of the land the town was built on. It might seem like a ridiculous waste of money, but she had big plans for the place. The actress intended for Brazelton to become a major tourist attraction with various production and recording studios and even its own film festival. Given that you've never heard of any such tour spot in Georgia, you've probably already surmised that things didn't quite work out for Kim's town. In 1993, she backed out of a movie she'd been verbally contracted to and wound up paying a $3.8 million settlement to mainline studios, leading her to bankruptcy. Because of this, she sold the town, but only got a measly $1 million for it. Nowadays, I'd be willing to bet its residents have absolutely no memory of the debacle. And consequently, the rest of the world has no memory of Brazelton. A birthday with a bang. At my last birthday, my uncle Fernando and I played Duck Duck Goose for two hours. At professional boxer Floyd Mayweather's 43rd birthday in 2020, he had exotic dancers on tiny airplanes and a suit that probably cost more than my house. Yep, when the wealthy do birthdays, they don't bother with pin the tail on the donkey. After earning an incredible $275 million from his previous fight, Mayweather decided to splash out on a colossal shindig attended by all his celebrity pals. The boxer booked an entire Hollywood nightclub and even rained piles of cash down on his guests throughout the party. Only the money was fake and featured Mayweather's face on it. Crikey. Just in case anyone in attendance forgot whose party it was, I suppose. Given how extravagant the whole affair was and the sportsman's massive ego, I wouldn't be surprised if Mayweather himself fired the custom cash out of a cannon. Ah, <sighs> maybe next year mom will let me hold my party at McDonald's. The Catwoman. I'm gonna give you guys some free life advice. Don't bother with plastic surgery. You're all beautiful already. Besides, you're on the risk of looking like Jocelyn Wildenstein. Oh wait, hang on, that's the before photo. Nah, here we go. This is her now. Yeah, just gonna let that one hang. Wildenstein is a Swiss socialite who married a billionaire arts dealer in 1978 and subsequently became obsessed with updating her appearance. After a messy divorce in 1999, she was awarded a whopping $2.5 billion settlement with an additional $100 million every year on one condition. She wasn't allowed to use any of the payout on her face. Now, I don't know whether she used that payout dough or her family's cash, but she certainly didn't stop having surgery. In 2017, she said she might continue going under the knife well into her 90s and reckoned she'd spent about $6.5 million on it already. Man, you can probably see why she gained the nickname the Catwoman. The super excessive surgery has left her with an almost feline appearance. If you ask me though, the result is a little less cat and a lot more catastrophe. Pampered pooches. Where does your dog sleep? At the foot of your bed? The corner of the kitchen? Out back in a cute little doghouse? All perfectly normal places. But if you're New York socialite Paris Hilton, you'd never accept such squalid conditions for your furry friends. In 2009, she dropped a mind-blowing $325,000 on a miniature two-story mansion for her pet dogs. That's already mad, but keep in mind, back in 2009, the average U.S. house price was only about $185,000. So Hilton's doggy domain wasn't far off twice the price of a full human-sized house. Jeez. The mansion itself spans 300 square feet, is fully air-conditioned, and even houses expensive Philippe Stark furniture. That's a big deal. These doggos have a fancier pad than me, and I'm willing to bet they don't have to pay any rent either. In fact, they probably eat better than me too. Damn! Ice Ice Baby The United Arab Emirates has had a real drought problem of late. It's a hot place and water is becoming harder to come by. 
leaving some to devise creative solutions to the problem. An Emirati businessman named Abdullah al shahai announced in 2017 that he has a plan. He's going to have an entire iceberg transported from Antarctica to the Arabian Gulf. Okay. In fairness, the logic behind the plan is somewhat sound. Your average iceberg contains up to 20 billion gallons of fresh water and go a long way to solving the water shortage. And it is theoretically plausible that a group of ships could tether an iceberg and drag it across the ocean. Whether or not it'll actually work, however, is another matter. For one, the vast 5,700 mile journey would take a year and around 30% of the iceberg's mass would melt along the way. And what did make it back would still need to be maintained properly while it's harvested for water. That would need one huge, super high-tech cooling system to pull off. Never mind the immense cost of attempting such a feat. There's been no word on the project since it was initially announced, so we'll just have to wait and see if the wild idea holds water. And with that impeccable pun, I've had my fill of these rich crazies. Which did you think was the looniest story? Are there any other rich nut jobs you want to see covered? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.